because when I go back to, to where I used to live, uh, some people uh, think I'm like faking it. Or some people say, did you buy those TikTok followers? Uh, <laughs> did you buy one million TikTok followers? On the um, and they don't like believe it or they think like my dad gave me the business and I'm kind of like running it now. Um, Wait, but, but these are the people that went to, to your high school, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> so it's funny. All right, guys, we're back with a brand new student interview. Today, we've got TikTok star Timothy Chanute. I'm very excited to get right into this interview. Now, when I first met Tim, he had been through a bunch of SMMA courses, had put in the work, but was stuck at the 2500 mark. What happened after my mentorship and him implementing these strategies that we covered and obviously him putting in the work with him for that is a pretty crazy story. So I'm super excited to dig into his journey, ask him how he's doing right now, how he manages his time between running a $37,000 a month agency and having a million followers on TikTok and a lot more. So very excited for this and without further ado, let's go right into it. But yeah, I want to get I want to get juicy, man. Uh, I'm not sure. Have you have you seen some of the? Probably not, right? But you haven't seen like uh, any snippets of the the previous interviews. No, I actually watched um, the Boyang one. I really, okay. I gotta meet this guy or get friends with him because I, I like kind of like the fact that just like me, we're not like doing Facebook ads, so it's like yeah, you know, we don't have like a step by step roadmap that we can follow, or we kind of have yeah. to, start to figure out certain things on our on our own. Because other people don't do it, yeah. Um, and he's pretty articulate, you know. Yeah, for sure. Um, which I appreciate. So, I think I think also one of the things that that you guys are similar with is is the fact that like, well, I think I think you've transcended right the the obsession with like the money side of things. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, right? But like, I feel like you're you're much more laid back or chill about that side of things than than when I first met you. You know, <laughs> maybe because now, maybe because now you have it. Because when I first met you, yeah, you're making like what, like twenty five hundred, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I think I still have big goals that are money related. But now I'm at a point where personally, it's not going to change me because you know I or like I make more than I need. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think are, are we getting into it or or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we're Maybe I'll use. I mean, was word. that like the first question, or do you? Just no, I mean, like, no, like it's very casual, man. <laughs> like it's very casual. Okay, like they just talk. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a Joe Rogan wannabe, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I love it. I love it. Uh, no, but but yeah, did uh, what, what, what's up? You were saying. Um, I forgot the question. My man. Okay, so so you know, I, I I basically said like, when I met you, and you were making twenty five hundred, like the big thing was like I want to make the money, right? Right. Um, so now I feel like you're much more, you're more, you're less focused uh, on the money. And ironically, now like it comes, it comes to you much easier, right? Much more naturally. Right. Right. Yeah, I agree. I still have big goals that I want to reach and that are still uh, income related, not for my personal income, but for more so the company because I want to take it to a certain level, but. Yeah, making like an extra thousand or ten thousand doesn't really change me on a personal level uh, because I make more than I need, and yeah, I feel different about it. Uh, mm. And also, more money, more problems. I realize that. <laughs> what? What the? Oh man, you know, especially lately, uh, you know, I've been taking so much on my plate, which are probably mistakes of mine, and. It's giving me a lot of money, so that's great. But man, it's stressful. Yeah. There is a lot of work to do, and uh, man, my mm -hmm. life sucks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, man, if you look at me, like I'm, I have time for nothing else but working. Um, but I think you learn as you go. You know, uh, yeah. it's funny because when we met, I thought I was already like uh, an entrepreneur that I knew already what I was doing, and yeah. uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> When I look at who I was like a year ago, I'm like, damn, this guy was an idiot. Uh, and it's funny because what I say today, uh, if I look like a year from now uh, or whatsoever, I'm going to be like, this guy was ignorant. Yeah, let me tell you one thing, man. When I first met you, you had a much bigger ego than you, than you do now. And you have, you have yeah. more reasons to have a big ego now because you have the fucking followers, you have the, the money, right? But yeah. like when I first met you, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Weird. My ego was, I mean, I've always been like that, but. I mean, because I think, I, you were self-confident. That's part of it, right? But it was like fueled from a place where like, 
from from a you know from your ego mostly i feel yeah um yeah i don't know maybe maybe it's like i was i don't know now that i have it and like i don't flex about being i don't consider myself particularly successful or or whatsoever but even when i see random people i don't feel the need or or anything to say that i'm on social media to say that i make x amount etc like mm. oftentimes if they ask me i just say i work in a marketing company but you know the mm -hmm. conversation kind of stops there i don't tell yeah. them doing odd stuff so yeah because you live a you're pretty subtle man like you live a pretty frugal life right like that that's kind of like your your approach yeah um yeah. i think i'm a very on and off guy in the sense that right now i want to hustle i want to be grinding and really take it to the next level and um when summer is coming like i want to you know party see my yeah. friends and uh, you know get drunk and do all of that all that stuff yeah 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 right now i'm really trying to laser focus and take it uh to another level um, mm -hmm. yeah. you mentioned you know you, you you're taking a lot on your plate um what, what are some of those things that you think like mm, maybe i shouldn't do so much of this and, and i should focus on on like something else instead sure so i think in in your entrepreneurship journey uh each time you get to a new level it's completely new right and you're going to make mistakes that you or you are in situations that you never dealt with before Mm -hmm. uh, so it's realistic to make mistakes. And, you know, I've seen it from going to 10K to 20K and now 30K. Uh, there are always new obstacles and new barriers that you have to um, to go through. And one of them right now is, um, you know, I've, I've said yes to opportunities uh, that make me a lot of money. Are not, I can't delegate them to my team uh, like the other stuff. And concretely, what I mean is that I have two types of clients that my team can handle A to Z. Uh, but right now, I have some other people that want me to do TikToks for them or, or stuff right, like that. Right, and I'm like, right. sure, I mean, if you pay me 5K, I'll do it. And they did. <laughs> so, right. you know, for, I, for like, I cashed in, but now I have to make some TikToks for them. And I'm like, right, right. Do I have the like, time for that? How, I mean, <laughs> how many? If you like, what, I mean, what, what does that look like? You don't have to like share per how much you get paid per TikTok, but like, uh, I don't. I I told them like on a monthly thing and like look, if you want to grow on TikTok, you have to posting. You have to be posting like two three times a day, because uh, like realistically, that's how you grow on TikTok, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I told them. Like, look, I'm not going to charge you more or less for video. Just like I have a flat monthly service TV, which was dumb for me. Uh, but I told them five k cash in, and now five k per month, right? <laughs> what five yeah, k yeah. per month, right? Yeah. yeah, dude, that's one of the things about TikTok creation. Um, TikTok video creation for partnerships. I've just been like, I, I you know, I've, I've, I've had like, um, you know, brands reach out to me. I, I just cannot like, I procrastinate on answering so much because it's good money, right? Like if you, if you do the math, like, oh, I'll spend like, it's a, a 15 second video and I'll make X, right? But it's more about like, it takes you out of, like, you have to think of the idea, right? It takes you out of your flow. It's not something that comes really natural. Like some, some do, right? Like, you, you know, like, I don't know, Shopify or, you know, some of the partnerships that we've done for brands, like, very natural you know very easy money in, in a quote-unquote right and they're super happy but there's just some partnerships where like you either get a brand that has like such a they're, they're they want to be, be, be so involved on the creative side of things they mm -hmm. tell you like oh you should say this and this and this i hate like, it dude yeah. i've built you know i've built my own audience even you like i've built i've got a million followers you might it might just be because I know what resonates with my audience. <laughs> Yet you've got someone who's never who's never created a TikTok, right? Telling you what to create is is mind boggling. Uh, I know, especially when you send that first draft and they want to change like the first clip. I'm like, man, I have to recall everything again. Yeah. Uh, now there's an update where you can actually change. But, um, yeah, I mean, what takes the most time for me is not the recording. It's just like coming up with the idea and yeah, yeah. Like, now because I have to make so many TikToks for other brands like i take everything fast shot uh i never redo them so i'm like five minutes recording max but it's just coming up with the idea the mental pressure to know that every day i have to um deliver to 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 make yeah deliver and make videos like yeah. it's more so that you know um and you know I, I mean those 5k like honestly i now that i'm like actually doing it it's not worth it yeah, uh, yeah. and it's one of the mistakes that yeah 
I realize. And look, I mean, I think this goes also uh, to like any entrepreneurs. It's like you're going to make mistakes, whatever level you're at. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure that Jaime makes some as well. Too, a lot. Um, you live and learn, you know? Mm -hmm. I think I think that that topic of like, you know, when you get to a certain level, uh, if you're still stuck on, because you need to transcend that paradigm of like, I want to make the most money. I don't care how, how, how much, how many hours it takes, right? Like, I just want to make the most money because if you, if you keep that, that paradigm or that mindset, which works when you're starting out, cause like, I don't give a shit. Like I'm going to put 12 hours a day just to make the money. Right. But if you keep that same mindset of like, I'm going to put how many hours into it, as long as I make the, that 5k, uh, it, it really slows you down because mm -hmm. then you, you come to realize that the one thing that's limited right now is, is time. Right. And so, yeah. you know, what's the, you know, you really need to get crystal clear on what's the value of your hour. Like I've, I've it's happened to me as well, actually with a, with a, a TikTok partnership. Um, and I've just been procrastinating on it so much and it just weighs on you and it weighs on you. Right. And, and you, you also ask yourself like, what's the cost of like this mental, uh, mental like drain, you know? Yeah. Cause these tasks, they're not particularly difficult to make or it's not rocket mm. science, you know? But it's more so with TikTok, it's a daily thing. You have to be thinking of it every day, come up with new ideas, yeah. get on camera. Sometimes you just look like shit and you don't want to be on camera. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah. Because your agency right now, it pretty much runs on autopilot, right? Or, um, or you still get it quite involved? So honestly, I wouldn't say that it runs on autopilot because I'm still uh, working on it. Quite a lot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, I'm sure you do as well. Yeah. Um, I think so. That's my problem is that I've been saying yes to too many things where I know certain clients I can delegate to my team and I don't have to worry about it. Uh, and we're going to do a good job. But there are some other opportunities or people that are slightly different once I have different needs, etc. that I still say yes to. Uh, but that end up coming back on me. And it's like that mental stress and they're very demanding, etc. Um, so I think one of the things, one of my mistakes right now is the ability to say no to things. Uh, and, you know, I think like I have a hard time finding a balance between, okay, I want to make X amount of money or I want my agent, my company to be, uh, here and to get there. Well, you know, I think I have to do this, this and this and this, but then when I get those opportunities that, you know, bring me up 5k, even if I know that it's not a good, like it's a client that's yeah. gonna take the piss, like it's hard to say no. Uh, I found and um, you know I think uh, it's one of the areas that I need to improve in mm -hmm. for sure <clears throat> and, and backtracking a bit because um, you know we, we talked about because the, the next milestone is what for you uh, like I want to make uh, I want to make 50k uh, a profit from the, the company euros and, right yeah euros euros okay um and I really want my team members because I have some really great team members. I want them to like make a very good living as well. Um, that, that's I really want them to level up with me uh, sort of thing. So, yeah. yeah. One of the things that, you know, backtracking a bit, right? Um, what, what would you attribute the, you know, you going from the 2,500? Because I think that may be a, a lot more relatable to a lot of people watching. Like from going to from the 2,500, to that first ten k month, what what do you think? Like, you would attribute that to after going through the the mentorship and all that stuff? Sure, um, I think I just wasn't getting on enough calls back then. Uh, you know, I had like one call a week max. Um, after the mentorship and you know being able to implement what you've showed me, etc. Uh, throughout the summer, I was getting like four six calls per day. Uh, and like not all of them, and I had not only like the Loom training that you taught me, but I had like, I discovered Upwork, I discovered other yeah. uh, source of, uh, of, you know, lead generation. And, and man, when you get like that many calls, it's not a, like you, first off, you don't have to like pitch super hard uh, on everyone and you don't have to be sounding so needy. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's like top of the funnel. And what I was missing was really like the top of the funnel, uh, getting leads. Now that I got leads, I was closing like maybe 20% of them. So very rapidly I grew. Uh, again, I grew very rapidly. I didn't know how to properly deliver or whatsoever. Yeah. So then I, you know, went back down a bit because I was like, damn, I can't handle this. 
Um, yeah. So my my uh, journey so far has been very uh, up and down, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, where each new peak, I'm like, okay, fuck, I don't know how to handle this. Go mm-hmm. down. I mean, it goes down a bit because I'm messing up, and then I learn from that and level up. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think the this peaks and troughs, like you just you scale, then it brings chaos into your life. Yeah. And then you fix the chaos and then you can scale even further. <laughs> well, one of the things that that I think, you know, going going back to our conversations back in the day, um, was building your team, right? And I think, you know, that's one of the things that uh, you were really bullish on, like just building this A team. One of the things that we spoke about in on the mentorship as well, um, yeah. worked on quite a bit. Uh first of all, how important has that been? And secondly, what are like the 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 main like shifts that that you did, or the main things that you looked for in those A players that that I that you got for your team? Right. Uh, yeah, I think back in the day, I was still working with like my best friend. Yeah. <laughs> Not a good idea. Not a good idea. Oh, man, no, 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 no. And it's funny because when I post on my Instagram story, uh, you know, like I'm hiring, etc. Because I try to get leads from the yeah. so, uh, like I have like five to ten friends. And like, hey, man, I'm interested. <laughs> with that. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's funny. Um, no, I think honestly, you need to take your time and at any level uh, that you are with your business, you need to take your time with hiring and really talking to like a million people because um again like one of the mistakes i did i think is i hired too quickly or you know i say okay this guy sounds good looks good on paper okay i'm hiring you uh and then down the line when we start working together i'm like uh you know this guy uh, is not it Mm -hmm. so uh, i look for work ethic uh people that are not money hungry because realistically at first i'm not gonna make you rich uh if you level up with me uh you know, all my current team members went from, you know, making X to now, like probably 10X what they're earning today. Uh, yes. So I want them to have this, this exponential growth with me, uh, be willing to continuously learn and continuously improve on their skills. Mm. Uh, I think that's crucial to me. Um, and also being part of the team, because what I work on, I'm not doing Facebook ads and um, my service delivery is almost like a, a big puzzle and everyone represents one piece of the puzzle. Yeah. Uh, so everyone has to be very coordinated. We have to have crystal clear communication. And yeah. that is also crucial to me uh, that, you know, we help one another. We are clear about where we're at with every task mm. that uh, we have to do, et cetera. Um, and again, like now I'm at this point where thankfully I have project managers and general managers that, you know, are able to do this coordination. But um, yeah, I think work ethic is probably one of the biggest one uh, for me. Um, Because I think, yeah, most of the things are teachable. Um, It's just if the person is willing to, to, you know, grow with us and actually sees the vision and where we're heading. Because, I mean, for for the people watching, uh, you are... Your agency is, is purely social media management, right? Unless you've changed from last time we spoke. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I don't know. Like social media management, we're just we're not just posting for. Our yeah, account. I know. I know. That, that's what I wanted to get at. It's like a lot of people think, well, social media management is just like some people posting on on content. I know you create like killer content, and you do like the like I'm sure you do the strategy even behind it, right? So like yours is like social media management on like steroids and actually done well, right? Yeah. Uh, So yeah, above social media management, we uh, create the content, uh, if it's for videos, if it's for, uh, you know, infographics, et cetera. And we have like systems built out to make that happen at scale. Uh, We also grow the pages, but most importantly, we want your organic social media presence to turn into like a major source of traffic and revenue. So, you know, like I'm not, I don't really care about likes. And this is a great tip to anyone that's pitching uh, social media management. Uh, Don't talk to them about the number of likes that they're going to get or the number of followers. Like it's vanity metrics. People don't really care about that. What they want to know is like, okay, am I going to make money with this? Is this going to be a source of traffic and revenue? Yeah. yeah. Realistically, in in 30 days, no. In three months, probably not if you don't know what you're doing. Um, but if you cultivate the right audience, if you have 
knowledge on how to monetize an audience, et cetera, it will happen. And some of the accounts that we work on right now uh, organically is that is their main source of traffic and revenue. Um, so that's what I pitch. In that we want to make money through 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 organic uh, social mm. media. And and what are the basically the little like the cogs in the in the conveyor belt, like the, the cogs in the machine? Because you mentioned this a person for uh, the creative, right? Mm. Then the, I'm guessing this a person for like the posting, like w- w- how many people? Does it take for this whole operation, and and what are the rules? Sure. Without uh, revealing your secrets, you know, but uh, you know, giving oh, a bit of good, an insight. Good. No, I mean by all means. Again, I think there are not many uh, um, social media agency owners that do what I do. So if you're yeah. going to do social media management, I mean, help me out because you know I've done those mistakes, and I think I got mm. to a certain point. So the way I structure it is, I have a project manager now. Uh, if you're a beginner, you can be that guy. Um, but then I have a graphic designer that takes care of most of the visuals. I have a video editor, a copywriter, and, uh, and that's pretty much it. Now, okay. yeah, uh, w- you want to make sure that you, what you create on social media is going to be adapted and suited to each and every social media platform. Like, for example, right now, if you want to grow organically, YouTube is probably not the go-to. It's mm-hmm. great long term. In the yeah, short term, sure. TikTok is where it's at, right? Yeah, and and Instagram Reels, right? You you yeah, yeah. wouldn't say, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. no, definitely. Um, so you have to, you know, be aware of the market because it's always moving. There are always new apps, uh, Clubhouse, for example, etc. And you want to capitalize on those opportunities to see exponential growth. Um, so you know, for TikTok, you're going to need to do videos. How do you do videos? Uh, you know. I mean, you have to figure out this whole sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, I think one of the great things as well is I cite, uh, I told you about four uh, team members that need to be coordinated to make this come to life. But I'm working on the copywriter to be able to also schedule the post, also answer the comments, answer right. the, the DMs, etc. Uh, I think you want to get to a place where you have a very good team member that knows uh, what they're doing, but then also level them up so that they can yeah. take uh, more yeah. responsibilities within that client yeah. uh, or within, within that project. Um, I, it's not a pride, and I've done this mistake again in the past, that I had too many cooks in the kitchen. Uh, okay. And it's not a pride to have X amount of team members. Uh, the less you have, the better, I would say, because it's less headaches. Mm. And, um, and yeah, if you have a few yeah. other beta, it's uh, it's a way better route uh, or way sure. better position to be in. Sure, hundred percent. I think like uh, oftentimes an A player or a stellar team member can do the the job of like ten people, yeah, uh, ten <clears throat> times faster. If you've got two of those people, you've got like twenty people, and you compete with people that have like five people who are average, right? So it's like twenty versus five. You have team two team members at the end of the day, yeah. um, hundred because the, the the project management, right? Uh, he does the answering the comments, all that stuff, right? Yep. Yeah, the admin, most of the admin work. Yeah, client communication. Uh, most importantly, communicating or coordinating the other team members so that they know exactly what to do. And uh, we work on a basis where the clients have to approve our content before we actually publish them, especially in the early mm-hmm. stages. So if they don't approve something, we have to correct it. And he's the bridge between the graphic designer and the client, if that makes sense. Um, so he has a lot of responsibilities, but, um, you know, that's why you really need someone that has work ethic that's reliable. And I think for me, like I have weekly calls with our clients where we break down what has worked, what hasn't worked and what we're going to do for the weeks to come. I keep looking at that camera, but actually my camera is here. Um, anyways, so I think, you know, having someone that's also articulate, that's native in English, uh, and that you're confident can talk to your client is crucial. Uh, I know that I can trust them because, you know, they are very sharp in the way they talk to clients and, uh, you know, they're going to spread the right image and the right message. They're also uh, pretty authoritative. Um, and I found that with some clients, we would let them walk over us or tell them they would uh, tell us what to do for their social media. Yeah. And it's dumb because we're the experts, we're the one that know what we're doing. And uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, don't. Don't be a bitch to your clients. Have authority. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you mm-hmm. don't know how to do it, then you, you know, make sure that you have someone that can and let them take over because 
if they run over you and they want to implement the strategy, then you know don't expect results from us. Yeah, I think I think a massive thing that most agency owners completely forget is that the fact that like on top of the actual service delivery, we are strategists, right? Like we we sh- you know we're literally kind of like we also have that consultant role where we come up with the strategy, whether it's social media management, email marketing, Facebook ads, you know, paid ads, whatever you whatever you're doing, right? Like the the strategy is a massive value added. Um, that's why you know I'm. I have like mixed feelings about Upwork and all these sites because like the client comes up with the strategies like, oh, I want this, this, and this, and this, and this, right? Um, okay, but you don't know what, you know, oftentimes you don't know what you don't know. That's not always with Upwork, but my point is uh, a lot of clients, like either they're expecting you to come up with a strategy or if they want to implement their strategy, you're oftentimes, especially when you have a, quite a bit of confidence with your service delivery, you should be coming up with a strategy yourself and you know, letting them know, like, hey, here's how we're gonna do things. Like, I think we should tweak the funnel this way, uh, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I think How it's your... also. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think you know, to me, one of the things that I'm working on right now is the fact that okay, today we're good, we're doing TikTok for them, or we're doing every social media platform for them, but level that up, and especially when it comes to my monetization aspect. Uh, you know, we have like a breakdown of what numbers we need to hit uh, so that we are supposed to make money. If we're not making money, there is a problem with that funnel. And now we want to pitch them, you know, if three months in, we're doing a really good job and they're happy with us, we're still not making money. Let me help you with your funnel. And uh, I've done that once or twice. You know, it's another 5K in. And once we got... uh, I like this. this. I like this. I don't know. It's a ching. (laughs) and uh, yeah, and, and eventually, you know, we can also do ads for them. I haven't gone into that point yet, but I think you can get one client really have a killer service delivery and then level them up to, um, sure. to you know, higher level stuff. Yeah. 100%. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really big on that. I'm really big on that. In my mentorship, I talk about the, the hybrid e-com um, service funnel. Uh, where, mm-hmm. Sure. Stop with a, start with a flagship service. And if it doesn't add much complexity, like for example, in your case, right? Like building a funnel, you already know how to do that, right? Let me offer that for, for you know, once you, once you, you're getting them good results, once you have built that confidence, it's literally the, big, the easiest sell, sell you have that month, right? Because they're already an existing client. So um, how, how is your day spent nowadays? Because uh, you mentioned, you know, obviously you have the weekly calls, um, you have the social media man- management, but at, at least for the agency, uh, sorry, the, the social media creation, so the tech talk, all that stuff, at least for the agency, what are like the main activities that, that you uh, spend time on? I think right now I'm very focused on building systems so that I can take myself out of it. It's a little con- contradictory to what I say because I've been taking things that I should have not said yes to and now I have mm. to do them, but um, I'm really big on trying to delegate my work uh, so that I can focus on other aspects. And, you know, there are millions of things that I want to do, but I just, you know, I want to be on YouTube. Uh, I mean, I want to do millions of stuff, but I just can't because I'm caught up in the day-to-day. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, I think I'm mainly trying to build those systems, uh, trying to delegate some of my outreach. And uh, I spend quite a bit of time on, on Zoom calls, uh, whether it's for discovery calls, uh, you know, meeting with my team just to, uh, train them and uh, client calls I'm taking right now, which I shouldn't. Mm-hmm. But. Outside of the agency, I want to talk more about the lifestyle side of things. Um, outside of the of the agency, like because you, you said your lifestyle is right now, I don't believe that because I, I mean, obviously maybe you're in a in a hibernation season, um, which by the way I definitely feel you on that. But um, what what like what are some some of the things that like take your mind? Of it because I know you you do guitar like you, you do music like yeah if you can walk us through like what, what things you do to maintain your mental health and all that stuff yeah I don't know if you caught me in the best time for this <laughs> I think right now I'm in a phase where you know I have so much on my plate uh, that sometimes even over the weekend and you know I'm saying this in all transparency because it's not all glamorous to be to be yeah. making a lot of money etc and uh, you know, I think that's maybe again, so again, a false belief that you see on the internet then that when you get to a certain point, you're like, you made it sort of thing. Um, at this current time in all transparency, I, on weekends when I'm like, okay, I can chill out a little bit more. I don't have to be putting in eight to 10 hours today. 
uh, mm-hmm. I finish a level a little bit. So I sleep, I sleep in, et cetera. And then I just procrastinate uh, because I know that I have a lot of things to do, but man, I just can't get myself to it. On, on weekends? Yeah, I've been procrastinating so much, man, uh, on yeah. weekends. Because like I know there is to, something, like a lot of things to do and I'm going to take it this weekend. I'm watching because I need to get this done and this done. But, yeah. Uh, I have found such a hard time to actually moving my ass on weekends and uh, doing something. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I go out, I try to go for runs. Um, yeah, I call, I call some of my friends, my family and uh, try to work out a little bit. But honestly, in all transparency, like I mostly procrastinate and watch podcasts and stuff like that. <laughs> okay, cool. And yeah, I want to be transparent here because, you know, course, after the media or what you see, et cetera, is like I'm living we are all living our best lives mm. but being an entrepreneur is not always like that you know it's tough dude. it's tough yeah sometimes and uh, yeah i think there are periods uh you know i think i i actually take a lot of advice from my clients uh business advice you know i develop a one-on-one relationship and uh it's my clientele is people that have legitimate business they're not just drop shipping if that makes sense yeah yeah, yeah. um and I'm not saying that your clientele are dropshippers. But. No, 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 no. I mean, they're not. But, but I mean, I, I agree with that, by the way. Like, I, I think dropshipping businesses aren't, aren't, a, yeah. aren't a thing. Yeah. So, I mean, when you talk to, like, legitimate business owners that have had multiple companies that sold them, et cetera, they've been in the situations that you have before. Yeah. And, you know, they give me the great, they give me great advice, books to read, et cetera, which have tremendously helped me, to be honest. Okay. Um yeah, I think, uh, you know, implementing what they've told me and, you know, trying to listen to uh, to people that have walked your path before is tremendously helpful. Mm. Um, kind of forgot what, where I was going here. But. No, no, that, that, I mean, I'll, I'll, I want to talk about this real quick because I, I think that's one of the great things about the agency model where you get to meet a lot of cool agency uh, business owners, right? And you get like to network a lot and, and you build this really cool network of like founders, business owners. Um exactly. How do you how do you cultivate those relationships? Uh, like, is there like how do you break through the ice in a in a much more mm-hmm. straight way? Sure. Uh, I think for me, I started to be a, a bit more vulnerable with my clients, mm. especially you know when I hop on one on one calls and we talk about the higher level stuff uh, instead of just you know how much how many views did we get this month or how many yeah, yeah. clicks etc. When we talk about the vision or you know, sometimes we just talk about cryptocurrency or just things that are totally not related. Or sometimes they're just curious, you know, they want to know how I'm doing as a business owner, etc. And uh, I think sh- being a bit vulnerable and telling them, look, I'm struggling with this today and uh, this sort of thing. Oftentimes, uh, they've been in your shoes and they know what, I mean, you know, generally they are curious. So I'm very grateful for the clients that I have and you know, the fact that they are genuinely caring about me as well. Mm. Um but you know, I've been open to like sharing, uh, sharing my stuff, uh, telling them that look, I'm not perfect, and I'm learning as I go. Like I've never had a business that big before. Uh, I'm 19. Like I'm, you know, learning as I go. Yeah. I make mistakes. I make a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, that really uh, guiding me in the right direction. And it sucks because you know they tell me something, and uh, now I have like so much more to do or full mm. systems to rebuild, etc. Uh, so I mean it's good but the more I work the more work I have if that makes sense that's what it feels yeah. like recently yeah yeah. Uh, so yeah it, it just hit me man that you're still 19 that's true uh, I, I thought I don't know why I thought you were uh, you were older um, on, on that topic of like age you started you started early like you you didn't finish school right you finished high school okay you finished high school but I believe you started dropshipping correct correct yeah. Uh, when you were like what 16 17 very good memory man impressed man i know this stuff uh okay so so when you started dropshipping right and and you made your first like big box could you could you call it big box yeah sure I believe, like, you, you told me like you made 10k a month right uh it was it like was ref. uh yeah revenue so dropshipping you know like margin yeah. dropshipping 10 15 percent so yeah okay okay Okay, so so <laughs> still like you know that that's kind of like you know when you're young like so, you know you can flex, yeah, yeah. you can flex on that. Like, I thought I was the king of the world. Right you, you you thought you were balling. Um, yeah. what what did you like? Like, how was the mindset with the money? Like, were your did your friends like I don't know? Ch- 
did, did they change the way they treated you? Like, did you see people like act different or what, what was the, like when you started making money, what was like the, your knee jerk reaction? Um, back then I was pretty open about it and, you know, I was actively not, I don't know if flexing was the word, but if you add, if you'd ask me, like I'll straight up tell you that I'm kind of like here and you're there sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, that was me back then. And um, I think it's funny because when I go back to, to where I used to live, uh, some people uh, think I'm like faking it. Or some people say, did you buy those TikTok followers? Uh, <laughs> did you buy one million TikTok followers? On um, and they don't like believe it or they think like my dad gave me the business and I'm kind of like running it now. Um, Wait, but, these are the people that went to, to your high school, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> so it's funny. Uh, I think, yeah, mentality in yeah. France is not the best when it comes to when you get like a, a, a certain level of success. People are very skeptical and yeah. they think something sketchy or whatever. Um, but no, I think uh, <clears throat> um, when I started to make a bit of money, I used to spend it and um, I, yeah, I used to spend it and like use it for like my social media content or, or whatsoever. Uh, but now, now it's really not about that. And I don't like, I'm not going to show you how much I'm making, how much I have in my bank account or not going to mm -hmm. tell you, you know, how much I make. I'm just like, look, I'm like, I'm comfortable, you know, yeah, uh, I yeah. work a lot. I'm comfortable. And as a matter of fact, I don't pay myself that much. I pay 3k. Uh, okay. I pay myself 3k a month, which is pays for my rent, pays for my food. And I'm saving up like 500 bucks also. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm like not really uh, living like a crazy mm -hmm. life so yeah and um the i believe you're in a, are you still in a relationship yeah yeah okay how do you manage that because um, like, you said you i mean you don't even have time to like i mean maybe you, you prioritize right but like um yeah how do you manage that aspect oh it's a long story man because we've been together for two years and we've known each other we met in i mean we were both expatriate in our childhood and we met each other when we were like 12 or something mm -hmm. uh, in Thailand. So we have like a crazy story, right? Uh, right now she's in uni in Paris. I'm here. So first off, it's like long distance. We get to see ourselves, uh, each other like once a month. So I think it's pretty good. But um, yeah, it's been great. You know, I think, I think it's one of the things and one of the reasons that it's really working out is because we are mutually pushing each other forward. And she wants me to succeed. I want her to succeed. She's ambitious. She has the values that I'm looking for. Uh, you know, it's not all about the way, she, even though she is very attractive, uh, it's not all about, you know, like the physical aspect, if you will. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like I'm almost more in love with, with what's in that than of course. Uh, the physique. So, yeah. But I mean, yeah, I, I, I've been so busy that, uh, and I think she knows it by now, but. I've been so busy that, you know, I spend like full weeks without uh, calling her. I mean, maybe not weeks, but there are days where, you know, I don't call her. We barely talk. And uh, um, yeah, it's a little strange because, you know, she's in uni. Uh, I don't think she she's as busy as me, uh, busy as me. And it, I don't mean this in a bad way, but, you know, yeah, yeah. Uni, you have more time to party, to see friends, etc. Like I have no social life. Uh, this mm. last month, I've had no social, especially it's locked down and stuff. So um, I'm still locked down in Toulouse. Yeah. That's People cool. don't really care anymore, but <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, we are at two very different level in our careers and we are living very, two very different lives right now, mm -hmm. uh, but because we are communicating and you know, she knows that, you know, it's not because I don't call her that I don't care about her. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, I'm busy and she knows that and she's, she's seen me working, etc. So we're very transparent and uh, yeah, we want the best for one another. So we're, we're making it work out, even if there are ups and downs, just like in every relationship. For sure. What about you? Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm in a relationship as well. That's why I wanted to ask, by the way, like, you know, oh, yeah. you know, these are casual conversations and just wanted to, to hear how, how uh, you manage yeah. it as well as an entrepreneur. I think, I think what you said about like, I fall in love with what's in here. I think, I think that's key, man, uh, because that shit doesn't get old, you know? Sure. Um, I think, yeah, the physical is, you know, there's obviously a, a importance to it, but uh, that that's not really, you know, it won't have longevity, right? Because you, 
you know, at the, at the end of the day, like as humans, we get pretty tired of, of the physical real quick, you know? Oh. Um, so how does your, I mean, just out of curiosity, how do you deal with the fact that, you know, you might be busy and laser focused the whole day? Are you long, long distance or do you guys? No. To- so, I mean, she's, she's currently here right now. Um, but but she, so she lives in, in Barcelona. Um, I live here in Madrid, so it's not, you know, a huge, huge, um, a trip, but, um, yeah, she, she comes, she comes over a, a lot. We, we, we're going on a trip like tomorrow actually. Uh, so, so we, we travel a, a bit. I think the, the main thing is like, it, it doesn't have to be this way, right? But I think like finding someone who, and we talked about this in the couple's unit, like finding someone who's as busy or as, 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 as focused on, on, on her stuff as well is really important because then you can come together, right? You can schedule that time together and there's no like, Oh, you should you should spend more time with me because everyone's just going like it's it's just like everyone has their own road, right? Um, and we we come together, right? But it's not like we depend on each other. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, sure. I think I think that's like a, a big thing, uh, especially as entrepreneurs. Because she, I mean, she's also an entrepreneur, right? Um, oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you she was that, a, yeah, I mean, yeah. have you been in other relationships, like serious one before or on? A... Yeah, I have. I have. Yeah. Okay. And uh, do you think that the fact that she's an entrepreneur or that she's also, I, I imagine she's pretty busy, right? Or she she is, but she's a complete different type of entrepreneur. Like she okay. she's uh, you know she's a creative by mind. You know, like she she writes scripts for like movies and stuff. Like that, it, really, it's, it's pretty cool. Like it's it's completely different. Um, and yeah, so so it's not like the typical <laughs> online entrepreneur, you know. That, but yeah, yeah. I, I I still consider that an entrepreneur because like you still create, you still kind of work for yourself. Um, she, she does have, she's, she also works at a, at a natural pharma company. Um, so she does uh, both, but um, yeah. And she reacts well, the fact that, you know, sometimes you just can't make stuff happen because you have stuff to do. Yeah. I, th- I think, I think communication is key, dude. Uh, like as long as, as you set the right expectations, I think mm-hmm. it's all, it's all good. You know, like if, if I also, I also do, do think that, you know, you have to prioritize, right? Like, I think if you, at the end of the day, like, and you know this, like, if you really want to, you can carve out time, you know? Um, yep. Like, there's always like a, you know, five minutes where you can like call, you know, and, and at least like make sure that you, you keep that communication. Um, because I have been, I, I fall into the trap of like thinking, oh, I'm, I'm just too busy, right? But it's, it's like, you're just procrastinating. You're, you're procrastinating on something that like, could you carve out five minutes that you're like scrolling through Instagram doing nothing? Yeah, 100%. Um, that's that's kind of the way I see it. Definitely. Have you um, have you done personality tests with one another? Uh, no, no, I, I've done mine, but it, that, that would be a good. That would uh, I'm uh, INTJ. INTJ. Uh, yeah, not a surprise. Yeah, I it's mean, it's very, active, right? it's very entrepreneur-like. Yeah. Architect. Cool. <laughs> yeah. What are you? I'm ENTJ. Um, what's a ENTJ? It's Commander. Okay. Uh, so it's like a lot of like leadership, strategy, strategizing sort of thing. Cool. Um, but it's funny because we, I did this with my girlfriend and, uh, you know, we see, I mean, first off, I think it's super accurate. Uh, like mm-hmm. mine it totally reflects who I am as a person. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and, you know, I think it's great that we know both our strength and our weaknesses the way that we react to certain uh, situations yeah. and stuff like that. And I think it has also helped us to, you know, say, okay, look, I know that she needs attention, et cetera. When personally me, like I'm fine if I don't see someone for like a week, like I, yeah, yeah. like I'm just that kind of guy, uh, but she needs that. And, you know, I have to acknowledge it and do the, the efforts and vice versa. Um, mm-hmm. So, I mean, if you're, if you're out there and you're in a relationship and, uh, and that I recommend it. Like I think it has been for my relationship. So. I know I know you're really big on personality tests. Like I, I remember <laughs> you saying. I mean, you even have your team members do the personality test, yeah, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, Man, it's what, massive because I mean, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. there there are so many levels. Like I don't about my team members. Like I don't read the romantic relationship how they react <laughs> related. Like I don't care about yeah. that. But uh, it's like it really gives you a lot of depth as of how to react in certain re- uh, situation and what's going to have the most leverage on them. Uh, not that I'm trying to manipulate them or whatsoever, but sometimes you're going to say something that may hurt them when you didn't mean it that way. Right. 
mm. or you might get a feeling that that person just wants the money, but actually, uh, you know, they care about building as a team, etc. I think, honestly, especially as we work remotely, we don't get to, uh, we don't get to, you know, have that like human connection thing. So, uh, mm. yeah, I don't know. Like for me, it's like almost a hack to know who you are as a person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Um, changing, you know, uh, shifting gears a bit. Um, and I think we'll wrap it up uh, with this, but you know, I mean, people might know this already, but you've got a, a million followers on, on TikTok, right? That's a lot of people, man. That's, that's like what more people than like, I mean, way more people than to lose for sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, that's a lot of people. Uh, but my question to you is what's, what's like, how do you feel? Uh, when, cause that's a big, big, uh, big, you know, big, uh, milestone. Are yeah. you, did it make you feel different? Uh, what's your like feel, what's your take? What's your opinion on social media? Sure. You resent it sometimes. Um, have you watched the social dilemma on Netflix? Yeah. I think, uh, that's, a, I think that's like a great thing to watch. And I actually don't like social media in the sense that, I think most of it, most of what you see is very toxic. Uh, you know, what, I mean, whether you're trying to be an entrepreneur, et cetera, like is it those zero to a hundred K in like three months, I think just set you up for failure because you think that you're going to get the same results and you're definitely not because we're all on similar levels. Uh, mm. But I think it depends on the way you use it. Uh, you know, I try to be more so on the value side. I try to not like talk about how much I make or, I try not to be like flexing on social media. I try to provide value. Uh, I'm huge on that. Um, if I don't know if I don't know if like followers change me. I try not to to get caught up in my ego with like followers. But um, I mean, I don't think much has changed except that it has been a huge icebreaker for like uh, my business because I like I have so much credibility now. Uh, yeah, yeah. I pitch social media, but on a personal level. Uh, except like I try like when I go out in the streets and not like uh, people don't recognize me or, or whatsoever right you've never uh, been recognized I, I have once but it's not like in the street sort of thing like we were in a group and the guy was like looking at me for like five minutes and it's like I think I've seen you somewhere uh, okay. or I mean I get like all my teachers and stuff like that they t- told me they see me on TikTok so uh, that's that like, Wait, this is from like your previous uh, your high school right <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, nice. And also, like, I'm not particularly. I hate the fact that people think I'm a TikToker. Like, yeah. it's like, no, I run a business. I don't like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> TikTok is like 15 minutes into like a 10 hour day. So, um, but I, honestly, it hasn't changed too much. It has been a great source of revenue. Uh, you know, I think many of my friends now look at me as a TikToker or uh, that guy, etc. At first, it was very grinch because I, you know, when you don't have followers, people just like, ah, he's a TikToker, yeah. that's famous fuck. But now that I have, I guess, a bit of numbers, uh, they look up to it. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think. I think. I, well, no, not really. Um, I think. I think what you said. What you said on the, on the like value over lifestyle is, is massive. Like I, I, I agree with that so much. Like sure, you know, I'll I'll flex a little bit here and there, right? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, but but I I think like I, I do so more more from a standpoint of like, hey, I'm getting the results, but I don't like making that the core of the content. I feel like people are just so fucking tired of that, right? Yeah. Um, like I, you know, be, people understand that like, hey, like just because someone is flexing something, number one, it's pretty easy to fake things. Uh, number yeah. two, like you want to if you are investing into something, right, like a mentorship or something like that, like you want to make sure that the person you invest into, like their free content, their, their value, the value they're, they're given, like it's legit, right? Because like, that's what you're buying into. You're not buying into the lifestyle because when you buy into the lifestyle, like it's, it's a, it's a losing um, scenario. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I mean, I think for us as content creators, you have to find the right balance between what's going to get views and uh, providing that's the value. One. And, you know, in content creation, I think it has to be, you have to have like that clickbait, almost negative, yeah, yeah, yeah. like shocking factor. And then you can like switch to doing yeah. it and to like it's, something that provides value. I feel like that's the hardest thing to balance, uh, especially with TikTok, man. Like that's why with TikTok, I have a, I mean, that's why I haven't posted in a minute, but I have a hate and, and oh. love and hate uh, relationship where 
I just think the be like it's just a I find it pretty toxic and, and I find it like I mean obviously you do a great job at it, right? Um, but I often found that I was creating content that I, I wasn't really passionate about. Like it, you know, I, w- I would have loved talking about other type of stuff, but mm-hmm. I, and then I, I, again, like I, I understand, like I'm not I'm not the typical like creative person that you know says, oh, I just want to create like what I would love, right? Like no, you have to understand that there's a market. You, you have to you know tailor your message to the market. But it, it, it's 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 hard to find that right balance where like you're creating content that you really like that you you know truly love um, and also cater to an audience. And with TikTok, I, I struggle with that uh, at times. With YouTube, I find it easier. Um, I feel like even just having this this conversation, like, yeah, sure. I mean, this this will get viewed by like I don't know how many people. Um, but like it'll, it'll be less views than 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 TikTok. But like I feel like number one, the impact is is sometimes uh, bigger. And also, like it's just more casual. Like we're just talking. Um, again, I love TikTok. Dude. I'm I'm so so grateful for TikTok. Uh, even the people that I've met, just like you, for example. Um, and and all people. I, like, I mean, I think I'm grateful been, for it. But I think you've also been rewarded for actually creating the good content uh, because on TikTok, like you haven't like I've grown faster than you, but my content I would say is not as good as yours uh, in terms of like the value I provide, etc. Uh, but then you blew up on Instagram where I couldn't. Uh, hmm. So I think even if you had like this later gratification, uh, you ended up being rewarded for it by, you know, exploding on Instagram. Um, maybe, maybe. Um, I think I think social media, like a lot of people think that like this, this, you know, creating content on social media and like being a content creator is easy work, but it's tough, man. Yeah. Especially even the mental side of things, like, uh, you know, just surrendering to the fact that like, there'll be months where it's just, it tanks, everything tanks yeah. and you think you're going yeah. to shit. <laughs> and then this month where you just think you're on top of the world. And I had like a full month, maybe even two months. I was sitting at like 700K and my videos were barely getting 10K views on TikTok. Mm. And like, man, I was like, okay, I'm done. I mean, not I'm done, but like, I'm, you know, <laughs> this is the end. And I kind of hated it, but I knew, and I was telling this because I still was hopping on calls and running my business. I was like, look, there are ups and downs, right? Uh, but I was like, I couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Uh, but thankfully, uh, I came out and I was right about that. It's like, look, just keep doing your thing. You keep persevering. Uh, there are ups and downs. You know, sometimes your views will be like a million per video mm-hmm. and sometimes you'll uh, be at the very bottom. But if you keep yeah. testing and keep grinding, eventually you'll be rewarded. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And it makes for great stories, man. It makes for great stories. And I think that that's like a, a really good lesson um, that can be applied to anything. Like even for the agency building, people watching this, like mm-hmm. you just have to hit that ice until it cracks. And even when it cracks, like you still have to, you know, like there'll be times yeah. when it just feels so hard and you just have to, you know, you have to stay consistent. Like if you just focus on the results and, and what's coming back, like obviously you have to look at the feedback, optimize, right? I'm sure you did that. Oh, yeah. you know, maybe this is not quite working anymore. Let me, let me switch things up. Let me try different things, right? Like you have to be smart about it, right? But yeah. it's about staying consistent and, and that applies for social media, that applies for like the agency, like people who are, you know, there's just some people who who just don't have, well, I think you can, you can cultivate that, but if you don't cultivate that, it's so hard to be successful in anything really. Like if you don't have that perseverance and that also patience while you're persevering mm-hmm. uh, to get a specific result, like you don't really have what it takes, you know? Yeah, no, 100%. I think, uh, I think also as an entrepreneur, you have, a decision to make at a certain level where you're either going to go for the lifestyle or you're going to build an actual company. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we, you made that decision. I made that decision and everyone else in the business, but um, you know, when you make like three, five K a month, you have enough to travel. You have enough to live the lifestyle and except if you're like crazy with your spending, uh, you know, you should be fine. Um and, you know, realistically, what I know that when I started or even one of the reasons I started entrepreneurship in the first place is because I wanted to have the lifestyle mm-hmm. uh, and not particularly be flexing, but I've been traveling all my life and I wanted to continue that. I didn't want to have a bus, work my own hours, not work that much to really just enjoying my life. Mm-hmm. Then when I got to that point, um, it changed. And I was like, OK, I mean, now I'm kind of like having fun with this. Uh you know, like I see the potential and I could actually take this to like a million dollar company or, or whatever that figure is, but I can make something big out of it. Uh, and mm-hmm. now do I just want to go to the Bahamas and chill out and, you know, keep my 3k or, or yeah. you know, do I want to build something massive? <clears throat> so I made that decision. Uh, I think you did too, but 
yeah, on a daily basis, it might sound like, damn, I wish I could just be in the sun on a beach right now. But yeah. uh, again, like I'm in that phase right now where I don't really see, I have a hard time seeing the, the light at the end of the tunnel, but yeah. I think I'll be rewarded for my grind. And uh, at least I hope so. For sure, man. Uh, it's part of the process, I think. Like sometimes it's, 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 it's part of the process to doubt uh, as well. Like I feel like, you know, people who've, who've watched this interview, like they might think all oh, these people are, probably never have any doubts like they just have a killer clear roadmap and, and obviously there are times where you just like doubt like is this going to work and even when you're like at 30k you know 30 000 uh, euros per month like uh, you still have doubts of like whether this is the right you know whether this is like the right path in life whether this is the, you know the right thing you should be doing in life whether like you're going to be able to get to a 50k month mark um but but at the same time like i think what you said that mindset of I'm trying to build something here. Like I love building shit and falling in love with the game, right? Like I think that's 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 the uh, the commonality that I've seen with you know the people in the 10K club and uh, from my mentorship and you know the people that have jumped uh, on the student interviews on on YouTube, like Boyan, Kasim, like you know you, uh, just in love in, in love with the game and, and I'm trying to build something big because as you said, when you get to like 10K a month, like you don't necessarily need more money. Like if if you obviously if you want to buy a jet, like. Yes, you need a right. bit more, right? But right. if you want the typical laptop li- lifestyle where you have time, location, financial freedom, like you don't need much. You don't need, a, well, you need uh, quite a bit, but but you don't need like 30K, 50K, 70K per month, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think it, it, it's a decision to make, but like at the end of the day, you just, I think we're all young and, uh, you know, what's the worst thing that could happen? Uh, like, honestly, Worst case scenario, I go back to my parents, I take studies. Like, it's clearly not the end of the world. I wasted one year. I know guys that are in uni right now that, uh, you know, have been trying, I mean, going in and out of unis for like two years. So they wasted time yeah, where yeah, yeah. I learned a shit ton of skills. And I mean, I don't think I'll ever be in that position. But, um, you know, I think just taking the path of entrepreneurship even if it doesn't work out, just evaluate what's my uh, risk. What's my true risk right now? I may lose mm-hmm. lose one year. I'm still young. I'm going to learn a lot. Um, if I persevere, my chances of success is probably high enough because, you know, the business we're in, anyone I think can make it if they have the right, right mentality and uh, perseverance and like work ethic. But, you know, worst mm-hmm. case scenario, you, you will learn a shit ton and uh, uh you know you have skills that others don't and uh you know life continues it's for most of us it's not going to be the end of the world if it doesn't work out so we yeah. might as well give it a shot that's a, a really good place to wrap it up man what's the guys what's the worst thing that could happen um it's a, it's a yeah that definitely a really good mindset to have and uh dude i appreciate you for coming on man i have uh, cool. i think we've had a a, a good conversation I, I love the the casual conversations um and obviously there was a bit of structure but i think uh you know, people can can take a lot a lot of value from what you've done, um, and I acknowledge you, man, for for uh, for the stuff you've done at, at a young age. You know, crushing it on 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 TikTok, uh, crushing it with your agency, and yeah, dude, I, I look forward to seeing you uh, crush it even further and and take this uh, to the moon. Yeah, man. Likewise, uh, congrats on your success, and uh, I think uh, yeah, I mean, I'd love to like, meet up one day. I know that uh, you've been to Dubai, and uh, I was in Dubai lately with mm. I know of that, but. Uh, it's great to surround yourself with, you know, people that are in similar mindsets or, you know, running similar things at a similar level. It's not easy to find. And uh, that's why, you know, I'm interested in like you, Kasim, Boyan, and, uh, you know, having this human interaction. Like, I think it's cool as well. Yeah. But um, yeah, either way, thanks for having me on. And uh, it was great. I'm, I'm looking to have a physical uh, 10K club get together yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, there's more people joining as well uh, with the mentorship, like, you know, people are getting incredible results and, uh, yeah, I th- you know, maybe like, uh, have something on my place, um, and just casually kick it, you know, uh, have like a, yeah. a drink and talk. Sure. Book me in. <laughs> All right, man. We'll, uh, we'll definitely plan it, but, uh, yeah, dude, uh, thank you for coming on and, uh, wish you all the best. Have a, an amazing rest of the week and we'll speak soon. Yeah. Thank you. Jaime. Have a good Bye-bye. one. Take care, man. Bye. So guys, there you have it, my interview with Tim, a pretty juicy one as always. We talked a lot about agency building, how he structured his social media management agency, which comes to show guys that an e-commerce agency is not just limited to 
Facebook ads, Google ads, right? You can get quite creative with your service delivery. And as we spoke about as well, you can upsell different services on top of that. We also talked about his biggest breakthrough that took him from 2,500 to 10K per month, which was booking in meetings predictably, such an important part of building an agency. Once he was booking in 40 meetings a day, partly with the automated sales funnel that we covered in the mentorship, his agency really took off. We also talked about social media and a lot more. So. Really hope you guys enjoyed the interview. Now, if you want to get results like Tim and you're willing to persevere, like we talked about, go ahead and check out the false link in the description. That is a link to the application page uh, where you can speak to my team and myself and you can see if we'd be a good fit for the mentorship. Now, Leo has out. This is not for everyone. We're pretty picky with uh, the people that we let into the mentorship and it does cost money. So it's not for everyone, but if you want to get into my 10K club, that 10K month plus mark with your agency in record breaking time, Go ahead and check out the link in the description. And as always, guys, hope everything's going well in your journey, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.